Hello, my name is Anthony, and today I'll be providing you a short tutorial on how to use one of our new machine learning techniques, Random Forest Regression. This tool is a part of a most recent release of the Whitebox General Toolset extension in which eight new machine learning tools were added to our library. Each of the machine learning techniques, including the Random Forest Regression tool, require a software license from Whitebox Geospatial to use. This tool performs a random forest regression using multiple predictor rasters and training data. It can be used to model the spatial distribution of continuous data, such as soil properties. Random Forest is an ensemble learning method that works by creating a large number of decision trees and using an averaging of each tree to determine estimated outcome values. Individual trees are created using a random subset of predictors. This ensemble approach overcomes the tendency of individual decision trees to overfit the training data. Today, I'll show you how to perform a random forest regression using some input covariates and some soil sample data for a location in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. So this is the Ottawa DEM. It is a 30 meter raster, and you can see the various topographic conditions within this region. I've also gone ahead and extracted some topographic attributes which help us use to build the model. Uh, various types of curvature, ruggedness index, uh, wetness index, northness, positive and negative openness, and also the multi-scale deviation from mean at various filtering windows, a uh, local scale, a, a meso scale, and a broad scale, and also the DEM. So now that we're familiar with the data, let's go ahead and launch the tool. The tool is located within the Whitebox Tools plugin from QJS. If you do not have this plugin activated, you're going to want to do so through the plugins dropdown. But for those of you that do have the plugin activated, the quickest way to find the tool is always searching for it. So let's go ahead and do that. So as you can see, the random forest regression tool is located within the machine learning toolbox in the white box tool. So let's go ahead and launch that. Once you launch a tool, you're immediately um, greeted with a friendly user interface. Uh, other machine learning platforms such as um, Python, Scikit-Learn, or RStudio's um, Random Forest or Ranger package, they are dependent more on a code uh, focused interface. And that can be intimidating for somebody who is just starting out in learning machine, um, who is learning machine learning, or um, someone who is just learning uh, coding, getting into coding for the first time. So this interface is much more friendly and it's easier to point and click the values as opposed to uh, coding them. So let's actually dive into the tool. So the first parameter is the input predictor raster. So let's go ahead and input these rasters into here. So we're going to want the magnitude files, the scale files, negative openness, northness, positive openness, profile curvature, ruggedness index. We're not going to use SCA, tangential curvature, wetness index, and then obviously the DEM and then profile curvature. The next um, input is the input training points, which are as the file soil data projected. So let's go ahead and insert that. The next parameter is the response variable field name. So in the soil data projected file, there is a class called SAN, which we'll be using to uh, build the model today. Uh, for when you're conducting your analysis, make sure you enter the correct spelling and capitalization of this field as it this tool is case sensitive to this value. The next parameter is the number of trees in a forest. Uh, the default value is 100. We're just going to go ahead and leave it at that for today's video, but if you want to bump that number up to 200 or 300 or so on for your analysis, you can do so. Uh, the next parameter is the minimum number of samples to be a leaf. The default value is one. We're just going to go ahead and keep it with the default. And next, the minimum number of samples needed to be a split node. The default value is two. And once again, we're just going to leave those as the default values. The second last parameter is the test proportion parameter. This is the split between the training and testing data set. So at a value of 0.2 indicates that 80% of the data will be used for training and 20% of the data will be used for testing. And I should note that it is a random subset of the 80%. So every time you run a different 80% will be selected. So we're going to go ahead and leave that as uh, 0.2 for today or 20%. Lastly, we have the output raster file. So this tool can be actually ran in two modes. So you can actually run the tool without writing an output raster file, or you can run it with when you when you want to write an output raster file. So I'm just going to mimic skipping the output for this. So when you um, run the tool without a raster, 
You can experiment by di with different models by adding and removing predictors until you're satisfied with the models. You can also tune the, uh, the, the model by playing around with the number of trees or the minimum number of samples to be at least. And the model, the tool will actually just spit out the model summary statistics and also the variable permutation important. Uh, variable permutation importance. It won't actually write an output raster file. So it's just helpful when you're building the model, fine tuning it, or you're applying the, the model to a, um, another data set. Or for example, so I'm just going to go ahead and show you what I mean by that. So I'm actually going to run the tool right now with these parameters, and I'm going to skip writing an output raster file. So the tool will read the data, and it will start to build the model. And as you can see, some of the model statistics start popping out. So as you can see, we have the training R squared of 0 0.81. We have the testing R squared of 0 0.63. And as you can see, the variable permutation importance scores, the multi-scale deviation from mean magnitude file at the um, broad scale was the most important, followed by the DEM and then other uh, deviation from mean, multi-scale deviation from mean files, as opposed to the worst performing, which were the deviation from mean, uh, multi-scale deviation from mean scale files. So those actually values did not produce a very high variable permut permutation importance. They don't largely contribute to the overall R squared of the model. So then now let's actually go back to the uh, parameter set and let's actually experiment with maybe taking out the scale files as they're not really that important. So let's actually remove those. And let's, um, let's bump the trees up to uh, 200. And now let's actually write an output raster file. So let's just call it test RF sand because we're using, building this model to predict percent sand content. So by adding an output file name and you run it a second time or potentially maybe a third time, you will use the model to create the actual spatial prediction. So when you run the tool without writing an output file, you're more focused on just fine tuning the model as opposed to actually the output file. So now that we've fine tuned the model um, to some sort of extent for this video, uh, we actually want to actually test the spatial prediction now. So let's go ahead and run that. And I'm actually going to pause the video when the uh, output file is being wrote. Uh, it takes some time to, to run. I just don't want it to add to the video duration. So I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video. So the tool just finished executing. Uh, it took about a minute and 26 seconds, which is actually pretty quick. So let's actually quickly just go over the model statistics and the variable permutation important. Uh, that we found by fine-tuning the model a bit more. So for this iteration, we actually ended up removing the scale files uh, from the multi-scale deviation from mean scale files, and we actually bumped the number of trees up from 100 to 200. So as you can see, the training R squared is 0.81 now, and the testing R squared is 0.61. So we actually decreased uh, the overall testing R squared by about 2%, which isn't too bad considering we actually took out um, some of those uh, rasters that weren't contributing that much to the model. Uh, maybe for a next iteration, we may want to consider putting more um, intuitive covariates into the, the model. Um, but let's actually now go have a look at the output file that wrote. So the file is called test RF sand. Just going to turn off this and actually put a quick palette on this file, color palette on this file. And I'll just invert it quickly. So this is the output for percent sand content for the Ottawa region. As you can see, the model has a high value of 90 and a low value of 5 represented in blue and red for 90. Um, as you can see, the model did pretty well to predict sand content in certain areas, specifically the Ottawa River. You can see these islands within the Ottawa River come up very high in red, which means high sand content. Um, overall, more tuning could actually be done to the model. We could once again, like I alluded to earlier, put in different variables that are more, um, that would maybe better predict sand content for this region. Um, or we can also play around with some of the other parameters such as the, you know, the minimum number to be a leaf or the split content. Um, so thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions or comment, please feel free to comment down below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel.